hello everyone. Uh, thank you for, for being here today. I'm Francesca and I'm a postdoc researcher at the University of Valencia in Spain. So basically, I could say that I'm an historian of, sci of gender and science. And I will try to tell you uh, briefly what I do as an historian of gender and science. So first of all, as an historian, uh, I'm interested uh, in science of the past and especially on science as it was made during what we call the age of revolutions a period between the 18th and the 19th century, uh, which was marked by major political events, such, uh, just to mention one, the French Revolution. But also, and this is, this is very important, by a notion of science, uh, which was actually quite different um, <clears throat> from, our, sorry, from our modern understanding. Uh, for example, several modern disciplines, uh, as we know them today, simply did Francesca, Francesca, sorry. Maybe uh, we have some kind of audio issue. Can you reload your your connection? Because Sorry, it's like the the screen. Okay. Because Can you try I, again? I heard a, a strange noise. I don't know if you heard it too. So uh, let's try. You can maybe go go back uh, uh, the, to the previous okay. slide. Um, so I was saying that uh, I work on this period between the 18th and the 19th century, um, which was marked by uh, important political events such as the French Revolution, but also uh, by a notion of science um, which, which was quite different from our uh, modern idea of, of, of what science is. And I was saying that several modern disciplines, uh, scientific disciplines, simply did this. Francesca, sorry, we, we have the know. same problem again now. Maybe if I, maybe I, like I, this. I, we, yes, if you if you talk, uh, it seems if you talk, uh, what uh, looking at the at the screen, it works. Okay. Maybe, maybe like this, it works. Sorry, again, I don't know what's happening. Um, so I was saying that were, there, were, there was not, not such a place as the public laboratory, like a university laboratory, laboratory. and science was often made at home. Uh, for instance, as you see in these two pictures, uh, transfor by transforming a kitchen into a chemical laboratory, um, or using the roof or a terrace uh, as an ob astronomical observatory. The family, the household, uh, was also crucial for the study of nature. Uh, wives, sons and daughters, and even servants, uh, often work, uh, worked alongside uh, men of science, helping them, for example, to perform the experiment. So, <laughs> I don't know why sometimes, okay. Uh, so you have to imagine uh, this particular context in which science was a collective activity made by men and women together. And this takes, takes me to my second point, which is gender. Uh, we, as I said, women and men uh, did scientific research together, but they were not considered equal by society. And even when they came uh, from the same social class, for example, uh, 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 aristocracy, they did not have the same social role, roles, nor the same education. Women, for example, were supposed to be, uh, above all, good wives and good mothers. And they were allowed to read, write, and doing science at home within the family, but they could not, not enter a scientific academy or a, univers not a university. And of course, they could not work as science, teacher, science teachers, for example. Uh, there were also a set of prejudices based on Francesca again. This, this noise. Okay, so 
uh, and these differences, these prejudices uh, represented women as naturally inclined to motherhood, so to give birth, more than to intellectual activities. And of course, these prejudices have been proved wrong by later research. Anyway, uh, these differences that marked the female and the male identities respectively is, generally, uh, is what generally we call uh, gender. So as an historian specializing in gender and science, I'm interested in how these differences, uh, these gender differences was, were constructed and imposed on women but also in how women, in spite of these challenges and prejudices, actually engaged in scientific research between the 18th and the 19th century, as I said. So an important part of my work as an historian is to go to the archives. These huge deposits of papers where historians find their material that we call uh, the sources for our research. These papers can be letters uh, that men and women of, of science exchange to discuss a certain research or discovery, but also unpublished writings such as personal diaries and laboratory notebooks, for example, in which the procedures and the results of the experiments were recorded. In fact, putting the details of a certain research on paper was a, was a way to not lose the data, just as we do today when we store our research on a computer file. So what we do is to start to, to uh, search for this document and to ana uh, and, and analyze them. Uh, but there is a problem, of course, <laughs> which is that it's not always easy to find women of science in the archives. Uh, they are in some way uh, hidden among the documents. This that does not mean, of course, that women have been absent for history, but rather it depends on how the archives were constructed, uh, which documents were kept, uh, which ones were discarded because they were considered unimportant, and in more in general, how the papers uh, on how the papers are uh, arranged and organized within the archive. So most often, what you will find in the archive catalogs, uh, which are the lists that we consult uh, just to know what's in the archive. And so what you will find in the catalogs are documents bearing uh, the name of men of men of science. So what we usually do as historians, is to look for traces left by women in the archives of men. And so <clears throat> in this last part of the presentation, I wanted to uh, share with you an example, a concrete example, uh, from my research at the uh, archives of the Paris Academy of Science, that you see here in the corner, uh, the, the, the Paris Academy of Science, which was one of the most prestigious scientific institutions of the 18th in 18th century Europe, which holds today a huge collection of documents left by several uh, famous men of science of the 18th and 19th century. So in these in this last few years, in this, in this archive, I've been looking especially for a woman. That you, see, you see here that this woman in this drawing, um, in, the, in the red circle. So uh, you see this woman, uh, in this drawing, she herself realized around 1790, so only a, a year after the French Revolution, and in which she pictured a moment, as you see, a moment of laboratory life, and more precisely, an experiment on human respiration uh, carried out in her own house in Paris, because as I said, in 18th century, uh, lab laboratories, chemical, laboratory, chemical laboratories as well, well uh, were um, placed within uh, the private house. So if you look closer, you will also see that she represented herself while taking notes of the experiments. And I just try to, okay, uh, hoping that there is not the, the, the same noise. So anyway, but who is this woman? This woman is Marianne Paul Lavoisier, better known as Madame Lavoisier, a woman of the French upper class, so a very rich woman, who worked as a translator and the illustrator of some of the most important and successful chemistry texts of the 18th century. And here you see some example. And also, as you just saw in her own, her own drawing, as a laboratory assistant. Anyway, you probably know better her husband, the famous French chemist Antoine Laurent Lavoisier, often celebrated as a sort of founding father of modern chemistry, a category that we don't, do not use actually today in history, and if you want, I, I, I can tell you why later in the discussion. 
Francesca. Not because of his chemistry, actually, but because of his work as a tax collector for the king. So what I do uh, in searching, uh, what I do is searching in Lavoisier's uh, collection of documents held at the uh, archives of the Paris Academy of Science to find the traces left by Madame Lavoisier, who collaborated with him, as I said, for around 20 years, so for a lot of time. And by traces left by Madame Lavoisier, I mean, uh, in some cases, literally her handwriting. And here you see some examples. Uh, it is, in fact, by searching uh, for, for her handwriting in Lavoisier's papers that I came to realize her role in her husband's research and career, a role that was later uh, typically uh, made invisible by historians who mostly focused uh, on her famous husband. And I will conclude just showing some example of the documents kept in the archives as Lavoisier's papers, but that actually uh, bear uh, her, her uh, wife, his wife, um, and writing. So that were actually compiled by his, his wife. So here you see, for example, Lavoisier's famous laboratory notebooks in which he recorded his most important experiments, for example, on oxygen. And that were, were to a great extent, as, as I said, compiled by Madame Lavoisier. And here you see some example of Ma Madame Lavoisier's handwriting that I found in these notebooks. Uh, sorry, but also his travel journals, we, uh, which recorded the observation. Uh, Two, minutes, Two minutes, Francisca. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah, I'm finishing. Thank you. Uh, so um, I was saying these travel journals. Uh, which recorded the observation uh, the, 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 the couple made while traveling uh, in France and studying the, compo the chemical composition of the soil. And you see that sometimes they actually uh, compile together the same page of the notebook. Uh, sorry. But also other kinds of documents. Uh, for example, minerals that the couple collected and analyzed. And once again, you see the, the handwriting of Madame Lavoisier. Uh, letters containing details uh, on their scientific research and even objects uh, that Madame Lavoisier used to compile uh, Lavoisier's papers. So it is by putting together all these materials that we can know more about Madame Lavoisier, about her scientific uh, education, for example, her, her own view on chemistry and society and politics, and also uh, about her, li uh, her life after Lavoisier's death. So, it's, it's by putting together all these elements that we can get a, a bigger and more complex picture uh, about science of the time. So here I conclude. It was, this was just an example of how we can work uh, as historians on women, gender, and the history of science. Of course, uh, it is possible to approach the topic for many, from many different angles. And I wanted to conclude with this image of another archive. And you see all the boxes that the archives may contain. And I think I, one can only wonder uh, uh, what other secrets all these boxes uh, still uh, contain today. So thank you and sorry for all the technical problems and the, and the noise, the strange noise. Thank you very much, Antonella. Uh, I think uh, finally we, we solve these problems. So I don't know if it was my computer. I don't know, okay. It's... Anyways, we are ready. And now uh, we would like, we have five minutes for, for the schools. I would like uh, uh, the, we have three schools, one from Spain, one from Croatia, and one from, from Greece, that uh, if you kindly can ask one question, it's, it's, it's a school um, to, to Francesca about the, the, the talk and yes uh, i just uh, want to say <laughs> that uh, my students uh, one year ago uh, was very interested about this theme uh, the science um, the scientists the, the women scientists in uh, europe and uh, they made an, a research them too <laughs> uh, about uh, the uh, the women that um, they were accused as um, witches uh, in uh, in Great Britain, uh, in Scotland, uh, some 
some decades ago, and they were so um, influenced by the theme, uh, they made a whole theater play about it, uh, where uh, in the end, uh, the, the, a, a male, a male who were teaching or walking with uh, these women, they, they burnt as witches, um, was asking help from the, um, from the audience to change things about women. Uh, the, the children have been influenced about all this uh, because uh, in Greece lately, there were two women scientists killed, great scientists killed by men uh, for passion reasons. And they, could, they cannot uh, understand why a so important woman could be uh, menaced by a, an ignorant man, man in the society. This was what, uh, and uh, uh, it is very, it is great uh, you do this research. Uh, I think it is uh, very important for uh, uh, the woman theme. The gender, the gender theme. I think that because I'm a poet also, um, and I, I cooperate with many uh, poets all around the earth, and we work women poets. I I know that uh, the woman, uh, the gender problem, is uh, too big uh, in general, and that in Europe. Uh, the trade, the the trade of women of uh, whites, is the biggest trade, uh, the, the most uh, profitable trade uh, from all the trades in Europe. It is very profitable. Uh, Thank and, you, Krisa. And these uh, women are very uh, are, they're often very educated thank you thank you francesca do you want to comment anything on no i'll just say thank you for for your comment and that's great that your student could could work on this kind of topic i think it's it's, it's very important for for students as uh, as well to 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 get to know the, the 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 complexity of gender relationship of the relationship between men and women uh, which are, uh, in my view, also power relationship, and, uh, and to see how they were present in history. And if we, until very recent time, we, we have made a history of uh, men only, it, it was actually uh, uh, a choice, Just only one of the possibility of, uh, of making, uh, of how to make history. And that it's, it's very important, I think, that students now can see that we can do uh, we, we can tell a different story, no? more complex and more varied. So thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. Okay. okay. Uh, we welcome a new uh, high school, uh, Pilar Punter. Uh, uh, yes, I'm Vicente Ferrer from Valencia. And we have a question from Besna Atomic and another question from, from, from uh, Samaniego from Murcia. Uh, I'm going to uh, beg you to ask uh, sh short questions, your interventions to be to be short ones because uh, we have limited time on the uh, on the answer and questions. So uh, uh, we are going to go first with the with the one in the chat. Can we distinguish between Monsieur Lavoisier's work from his wife's from the archives? And then we will go to to Vesna. or maybe. And tr please try to, to, to do short answers, please. Uh, my answer would be yes. F for instance, in the case of the handwriting, it, it's, it's quite easy because once you uh, recognize the two handwritings, you can really make like a list of the documents of the, it, uh, all, also the, uh, of the situations in which Madame Lavoisier was present. After that, uh, it, it's, it's not always. Uh, it's sometimes difficult to understand um, the um, to like like to cut the, the, this collaboration in two, no? Because they 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 were actually working together. But of course, there were, there were some things that Madame Lavoisier would not do as a woman. For example, publishing. 
and but she uh, made other things like prepare Lavoisier's career through through a set of activities that she could do as a woman. I don't go in, in the, into the details, but it, it, it's it's a difficult question. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Francesca. Uh, the school from uh, Besna Tomic. Uh, do you have a question? Uh, I have a question, which is uh, kind of the process of discovering the actual women. Uh, like, how do you find, do you just search through archives until you find, for example, some proof or just tell us something about the process of discovering the women in science? So, thank, thank you. Um, to, to be very short, it, it, it often depends on the case, on the case, on the women where you are, you are searching, looking for. Um, but in uh, in my presentation, I wanted to show that in the case of of, of Madame Lavoisier, uh, it was really for me um, um, to go into the archives and look paper by paper where her and writing could be found. And then you have, for for example, letters. So you you have to read the the, the correspondence, the letters, and see if uh, if one of La for, it's just an example. If one of Lavoisier's colleagues mentioned. Uh, Madame Lavoisier or an, another woman, because there were other women, other women, and were as well in this group of uh, of researchers, uh, if I may say so. And uh, so you, you have to follow the, tra the traces. The traces, uh, in step by step, reconstruct like a, a, a bigger picture. You know, but it depends on the case. You 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 do what you can basing on the instruments you have, on the sources you you have. I don't know if I understood. I uh, answered. Uh, a last question from Thomas, a Greek student. Uh, how much time took you this interesting research? Sorry? How much, how much time took you this interesting research? To do, ah, uh, I don't know. It's still not finished. I worked on the um, uh, laboratory notebooks that I showed uh, earlier uh, during my PhD. And now, as a postdoc, I'm working more on the travel diaries, which are like the notebooks that they compiled while traveling and while seeing nature, studying nature outside. And so, I don't know. Now it's been six years, seven years, uh, something like that. And uh, I worked on something else as well. So, I don't know. It's, it's a few years now. Thank you. <laughs>